For this week's project, we're making a quilt dress. This is gonna be a thrift flip. My sister found this amazing quilt from the Goodwill bins. I think she paid $5 for it. So we're gonna make that into a very girly dress. It is winter here and I am so tired of it, mostly because I'm kind of out of clothes. I like have five good winter outfits and I'm, I'm bored of them. So we're gonna make another one. Okay, for this project, we have the quilt that we're using. That was the Goodwill find. And then I got this at an antique shop and someone had cut up a quilt and I just thought it was so cute. So this is gonna be the front bodice. And then I have a pattern. So I'm using McCall's M7948 for the dress. So that will be good, except for I'm gonna do long sleeves and this only has three quarter leg sleeves. So we'll just lengthen the sleeves because I need it nice and warm. And then I have some zigzag trim because I'm gonna do a Peter Pan collar and I will link all this stuff in the description. So I have stuff to make my collar like a frill, a zigzag. It's gonna be a little over the top, which I love. And this stripe fabric, which doesn't perfectly match, but that's okay because you won't really see it. This will be the pockets and the back of the collar. And then to make it extra exciting, we're making the quilt jacket for my dog too. So that'll be cute. So I have the Simplicity S9426 pattern and some Velcro to put this on my dog. I'm so excited. And I do want to point out this quilt is not in perfect shape and someone's grandma did not make it. It's not like an heirloom. This was made in China. It's just old and kind of beat up. So do I feel bad cutting it up? I do not. We're going to start by cutting out everything we need for the quilt dress. For the skirt, I measured from my waist to my knees and added a half an inch for seam allowance. This gave me 23 inches long, so I cut two 44 by 23 inch rectangles and the bottom is going to be the finished binding that will act as the hem. We'll gather this skirt so it'll be nice and full. Cut out the bodice on the fold. I'm using that antique quilt square and it ended up being a little bit small so I needed to cut some extra for the sides. So if you're cutting the bodice from the same quilt as the rest of it, just follow the instructions on the pattern. Okay, so here is how the bodice is looking and it wasn't ideal to have to add these on but I actually think it's kind of cute and you won't really notice it because it's behind there. So I got as much of the girl as I could. That was difficult because I had to cut off a lot of her skirt, but maybe it'll look like a skirt with mine coming out. So I think that's looking really good. Now I'm cutting out the sleeve and I am lengthening it because I want a long sleeve and I'll be fully transparent. I did not cut this one long enough, so I had to do it again. But you can see I just lengthened it and then cut around the top of the pattern. And again, a nice hack is to position it so the bottom of the sleeve can be the finished edge of the quilt. For the rest of the pattern pieces, I just cut them out exactly how the pattern said to do. I didn't do any changes or hacks, so that's pretty easy to just follow the pattern. Here's everything all cut out. This is the collar and the lining. This is the dog jacket. See, it's a little cold. That's why I'm making her a jacket. But here is the testing. So it'll have Velcro right there, and then there'll be the strap for her tummy. But I just think that's looking so cute. And here's the dress all cut out. Let's start sewing it. Okay, day two working on my quilt dress. And I have this rectangle that's the front of the skirt. So what I need to do is I need to gather it so that it'll, you know, go around my waist. And then I've marked three inches down. And that's where the pocket's going to go. Because you got to have pockets. No dress is good without pockets. So we got to gather the top, put the pockets in the side, and then sew up the side. First, we're searching all the sides of the skirt. This makes it so there are no fraying edges. It also looks a lot cleaner. I am also searching all the edges of all four pieces of the pockets. Mark on the skirt where the pocket should be. Three inches down from the top is a good spot for me. Pin the pockets in place. Sew the pockets on. For this step, just sew the flat side of the pocket to the side of the skirt. You're gonna repeat it four times. Next, I'm sewing gathering stitches on the top of the skirt. So you need to increase the stitch length to five and leave long tails of string at the end and the beginning of each stitch and don't back stitch. So two parallel lines at the top of the skirt. Pull on the front two strings with one hand. With the other hand, start moving the fabric over so it gathers, and you repeat this over and over again. Each side takes about 10 minutes. To figure out how much to gather the skirt, measure the bottom of the bodice. That measurement should match the skirt's width. Another option is to take a waist measurement. I want to be able to pull my skirt over my head to remove it, so I kept mine loose at about 40 inches. Once the skirt is gathered to the right measurement, take it to the sewing machine, then sew around the gathers. That will hold them in place. Now that the skirt is gathered, it's time to sew it up. To do that, first pin the sides of the skirt together. Next, sew the sides of the skirt together. To finish the pockets, sew up the side of the skirt to them, go around the pocket, then sew down the skirt. I'm trying the skirt on and it's a little big. And 
<laughs> and okay, so it's supposed to be a bit big so it can go over my head, but it's still about two inches bigger than that. So when I sew this onto the bodice, I'll just have to gather it a little bit more. Um, and I think when I was trying it on, I like broke one of the strings. So that's bad, but you can kind of get, you can kind of see how it's gonna look, I think. So now let's work on the collar for the dress. Pin the ruffle trim onto the collar. So you're gonna place the collar face up on the table, then put the trim right side down on the top of the collar fabric, just pin those together. Then we're gonna take the liner fabric and we're gonna put it right side down on top of the quilted fabric and the ruffle. It's like a little sandwich and you're gonna pin all three layers together. Take the collar to the sewing machine and sew most of the way around the perimeter. The pattern shows two little divots in the neckline and that's where the show sewing should start and stop. Turn the collar right side out with the quilted fabric on top, the liner fabric on bottom, and the ruffle trim coming out the side of the collar. Iron the collar flat. Also make sure to iron the flap closed inside the neck. I didn't bother sewing mine closed yet. That'll happen on the next step when the collar is attached to the bodice of the dress. To make the collar extra adorable, I finished it by sewing rickrack around the edge of the collar. I've never done this before, but I drew a little bit of a line and so I could keep the rickrack lined up on it and that made it pretty easy to just sew it around the collar. At the end of day two, I had the collar and the skirt all finished up. Day three working on this project. Let's put the bodice together, connect it to the dress. I'm very excited. Let's make this bodice. So you're going to put the front and back pieces facing together and then you're going to stitch them at the shoulders. Next I searched around all the edges of the bodice. I should have done this before sewing the shoulders though. The pattern I am following instructs you to do interfacing and have a lining like at the neck. It's called the neck facing for the front and the back and <laughs> I don't like doing that. The one time I did it didn't turn out great because I've used this pattern a few times. So instead, the collar is both adorable and helps you so you can just skip that skip, especially because we're using a quilt. You really don't need lining on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew the bodice to the collar and that will have your finished neckline. So it's kind of a hack that is also really cute. Iron the collar as flat as possible onto the bodice. Ironing with quilted fabric is really tricky since it's so thick, but I was able to get it mostly flat after lots of ironing. To finish the bodice, stitch the front and back of the dress together at the side. Sew a gathering stitch on the top arch of the sleeve. Once it's stitched on, pull the gathering stitches to create a little puff sleeve. It's cute and it's pretty quick. For the bottom of the sleeves, I want to add an elastic so it's tighter and looks gathered. So I cut a little piece of elastic, then I sewed it on the inside of the bottom of the sleeve. I backstitched on the first half and then pulled it really tight while sewing it onto the rest of the sleeve. And this creates a really nice detail. Next, stitch the sleeve seam closed. Okay, now we need to attach the sleeve to the bodice. To do this, put the right sides together, then pin the sleeve into the armhole. The large circle lines up to the shoulder seam. Adjust the easement, which is the gathering stitch on the shoulder, so the sleeve fits perfectly with the armhole. Next, we're gonna stitch the sleeve into the armhole. To make it as strong as possible, stitch it once all the way around, and then stitch again a fourth inch away so that it is nice and sturdy. The bodice is done, and oh my gosh, look at that sweet little sleeve. The collar, it's looking very good. I just gotta add the skirt on now. For the last step in finishing the dress, we're gonna pin the skirt into the bodice. I started pinning on each side, then I found the middle of the bodice and skirt and pinned those together. Then I worked my way out with pins. Once the skirt is pinned to the bodice, sew them together. Stitch again around the skirt a fourth of an inch away. Again, we're just doing this so it's nice and strong and you know, it doesn't rip. Okay, I have the dress done and it's so cute. I'm not gonna show you too much of it. I will tell you one regret I have is that I didn't make the head hole bigger than the pattern and it's tight. So if you use this pattern, cut the hole a little bit bigger. Anyway, we got to do the dog jacket and I'll do a big reveal. And one thing I made a mistake on was this pattern I'm using for the dog jacket is you're supposed to like create your own quilting, like do your own batting, do a top layer, do a bottom layer. I'm not doing that because I just have the quilt. So I need to so this included seam allowance and I don't need that. So I need to cut around the outside and then we're going to hurry and finish this so I can show you the reveal. Now that those are cut down, I searched the side and the bottom of the hood and the two sides of the tabs. Now let's sew the hood. Put the right sides together and stitch the center back seam. Add bias tape onto the front edge of the hood. This is how we're going to finish it off. Put it on while flattening out the bias tape. 
Sew the bias tape onto the hood on the first line closest to the edge. Then fold the bias tape over the edge of the hood and pin it in place. Stitch around the inside edge of the bias tape to finish it off. I decided to be a little fancy and add some rickrack trim around the hood too. You can never have too many details. Pin the hood to the neck edge and then sew the hood in place. Add bias tape around the border of the jacket. I'm sewing it on just like we did the hood. It has a lot of steps, but it's totally worth it because it looks so amazing. On the tab, sew on the bias tape on three sides, the rounded edge and the two longer sides. Add two pieces of Velcro to the front pieces of the jacket and two pieces to the tab. Last, sew the tabs in place onto the body of the jacket. Okay, here we are in our completed outfits. I think they look so cute and I gotta tell you, I'm the most comfortable I've been in a long time. Turns out Quilters is very warm, very cozy. And here's Lucy's. I think she looks really adorable. Um, I put some rickrack on the hood and it's just, it's so cute. Anyway, I hope you guys loved seeing how to make a quilt dress. If you have any questions, put it in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe.